Welcome to the MH2801 video segment on the convolution theorem. Given a convolution between the functions f and g, uh, which we write as f star g, which is a function of t, uh, and this is actually an integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of t prime times g of t minus t prime integrated with respect to t prime. Now, the convolution theorem is a theorem about a statement about the Fourier transform of f star g. Now, let's write down its Fourier transform, uh, and that would be 1 over square root 2 pi, the integral from minus t infinity to infinity, uh, f star g of t times e i omega t dt. Okay, this is the Fourier transform of f star g of t and uh, let us um, insert the, def the definition of the uh, convolution of f star g into the Fourier transform and see what we get and we see that okay, this is 1 over square root 2 pi an integral from minus infinity to infinity of course f of t prime g of t minus t prime d t prime and here we have e i omega t dt now recall that the um, Fourier transform of f is f twiddle of omega and this is 1 over square root 2 pi the integral from minus infinity to infinity f of t times e i omega t dt and g twiddle of omega which is the Fourier transform of g of t is the integral from minus infinity to infinity g of t e i omega t dt now here what we want to know what we want to um, uh, understand is that the integration variable t because it's integrated over, it's a dummy variable. So we could easily put a prime over here. So let me change the color and put the prime in red. Put the prime here, put the prime here, put the prime here, so that we can distinguish between the integration variable of f and the integration variable of g. So we can do that. And one, one thing we could do would be first to uh, write ei omega t, because we see that we have a f of t here, an integration over t prime uh, <coughs> and if that if there is a t prime e i omega t prime in here we would have we could we could integrate over it and then we will find that um, we get the Fourier transform of f of t so let's do that and write this as e i omega t minus t prime and e i omega t prime. So if you combine these two, of course, you get back e i omega t. But now that it is split, let's continue uh, working through the Fourier transform. And we find that now, uh, well, first of all, we can uh, combine the, <coughs> we can combine two factors of 1 over square root 2 pi to write this as, 1 over 2 pi, okay, minus integral from minus infinity to infinity. Uh, let's write this as dt prime. And another one, integral with respect to dt. Um, and that then we have uh, f of t prime, e i omega t prime, g of t minus t prime, e i omega t minus t prime and then here we have uh, one is respect to t one is respect to t prime now the one that we uh, here what we can see is that <coughs> f t prime e i omega t prime 
uh, we can easily bring it outside of the, the integral with respect to t because it does not depend on t. So we can bring it all the way over here. Now the other the other um, the other product of functions, e g t t minus t prime and e i omega t minus t prime, uh, we could perform a change of variables. So if we let t double prime being equals to t minus t prime, and then with respect to the integration variable t, then dt double prime would be equals to dt, and uh, g of t minus t prime we can will be able, we will be able to write as g t double prime, and e i omega t minus t prime we can write as e i omega t double prime. So if we do the change of variables, then we find that we get 1 over 2 pi, an integral from minus infinity to infinity, dt prime. Here we have ft prime ei omega t prime. And the other integral we have um, respect to dt double prime, we have gt double prime ei omega t double prime. And if we distribute the factor of 1 over square root 2 pi uh, evenly between these two integrals, which are uh, separable, we find that we get indeed, we just get back the Fourier transform of f from for here, for this particular part, this particular integral. And then from this integral, we get back the, we get the Fourier transform of g. So the result, uh, the, the convolution theorem tells us that the Fourier transform of a convolution of two functions is precisely equals to the product of its Fourier transforms f and g. And this is the convolution theorem.